Hi, I'm going to talk about ethical issues in this video, looking in particular at whistleblowing codes of practice and discrimination. So first of all, ethics, what does that term mean? Well, ethics are all about what is right and wrong. So all of us have got different opinions on all sorts of things, but usually as a society, our ethics are similar. They're not identical because every individual's got different points of view, but generally society agrees a set code of ethics, you could say. And it's important to be clear that ethics are separate from laws. So you've got laws which punish certain actions. Ethics are a separate concept, but of course things often overlap. So ethically, you might think that it's wrong to steal something. That's, a, that's your ethical opinion. But ultimately you've got laws which back that up because most people think stealing is wrong and so the government put into action laws to prevent stealing or to punish stealing at least. So usually they're conjoined but not necessarily. There might be certain things you think ethically which are unrelated to a law. Like you might feel ethically you don't want to eat any meat, you might want to become a vegetarian or a vegan, that's your ethical view but it's not law. So they're not exactly the same. But because ethics usually refer to things which most people are agreed on, your morals might be much more individual, but your ethics are usually, like I say, fairly well agreed with other people. Not perfectly agreed, but usually well agreed. Your company, your organization, your whatever it is, might publish a code of practice to help guide the members on ethical and legal issues. So these are documents, usually a big policy or several policies, which outline the organization's stance on various issues. So this one here is a little screenshot of a summary of the BCS code of conduct. This is a professional body for IT in the UK. And it, there's a long policy to go alongside these sort of four fairly vague bullet points. But the point is to have a document which gives some guidance on what you should be doing. I mean, I say guidance. It's often phrased as guidance, but usually codes of practice, codes of conduct are policies. So if, for example, it says, you must not use your work computer to watch YouTube videos and you end up doing it, you could well get in trouble for not following that code of practice. So usually these are documents the company is trying to use to say the ethics, but in reality you have got to follow them because it is a policy. And just on two slightly different terms here, we've got code of practice on the left and code of conduct on the right. They're very similar and we can pretty much assume they're the same thing. Code of practice is often more towards laws, whereas code of conduct is more about ethics, but really they're both saying what the organisation thinks you should be doing. An ethical issue which employees and employers should be aware of is whistleblowing, and there might well be a paragraph in the code of practice on whistleblowing. So whistleblowing is sounds silly if you haven't heard that word before, but this is when an employee reports unethical or illegal actions. So like somebody blowing a whistle to start a football game or end a football game, this is where you're trying to get somebody's attention for something which, in your opinion, is going wrong. So if somebody's misbehaving or something illegal is happening, you might feel as an employee a ethical responsibility to report it. So to give you a little case study of just the first thing I could think of, let's say you've, you've got a technician at a company who decides to become a whistleblower because they've seen in their daily actions, customer information being misused. So, for example, a manager might not be securing data despite previous complaints. So this technician has complained to managers before saying, why are you not securing the data? But they haven't acted on it. And this is all illegal according to the Data Protection Act. This law says to store sensitive customer information, you've got to keep it safe. You've got to encrypt it, you've got to have secure systems, antivirus, etc., etc. And if a company's not doing it, the employee might feel an ethical responsibility to act and report it. Now, who they report it to could vary. You know, reporting it to the manager who has ignored them before might be pointless. So they could report it to the media, like a newspaper. They could report it to the government. Usually whistleblowing is quite a serious thing. It's not because somebody's dropped some coffee or somebody has made an unkind joke. It's usually quite a serious thing which affects lots of people. And because of this, employees cannot be punished due to reporting 
these negative things. Even if a company gets really badly affected by this reporting, actually, according to the law, a whistleblower cannot be punished, can't be fired, can't have their salary taken away, can't be you know, held back from promotion. They've got to keep going as normal because it's seen as a good thing to be reporting it. If the employee was misusing it and reporting lots of silly stuff and causing a problem, they could be punished. But for really serious stuff, they wouldn't be or couldn't be according to the law. So what a employer, what an organization might do to try and stop the negative effect potentially is to provide a way to report unethical behavior. They might have a whistleblowing policy which allows you to report anonymously via an email or via a, a form on a website just to try and keep things internal. They might try and encourage employees to report stuff but quietly away from the government, away from newspapers. But to go for another ethical issue which is probably less about you weighing up what's right or wrong uh, because discrimination is cl clearly wrong um, but it's obviously quite complicated. This is when you're mistreated because of a protected characteristic. And word protected means that under law you cannot be uh, mistreated because of it. So things, things like disability, race, sexuality, religion and gender. There are some more as well. Things which either you can't change or you shouldn't feel the need to change um, and so you shouldn't get mistreated because of these. So clearly as a person you should be ethical and not mistreat somebody because of these things in particular but it is illegal as well. So according to the Equality Act from 2010 you cannot mistreat somebody according to these characteristics and of course you could get sued as well which is a separate separate issue. Now as an employer you should be trying to root out this wherever you can including trying to get rid of things like bias. Bias as a general concept is where there is some unfair preference given to something. So if I say oh aren't Apple by far the best phone manufacturer in the world? That's a question but it's obviously a biased question because I'm leaning towards Apple. I'm trying to get you to say Apple are really good. So that's not fair. That's not illegal. That could be unethical. What could be illegal and is unethical, I would argue, are when somebody is maybe not hired because of a bias. So if your manager has got a bias against one of these groups of people, they might not get hired, which would be illegal. So what employers often try and do nowadays is try and avoid bias in hiring people in trying to get new employees by what we call or what is called screening applicants blind. So if you are screening applicants, you're looking through to think about who is going to be good, who you're going to invite to interview, who's got a good CV, who might be a good employee. But you do that blind. What that means is usually they'll try and remove any photos, remove any names, to remove anything which might give a clue as to the protected characteristics. Because if you know somebody's religion or disability or race, you might either want to hire them because of it or not want to hire them because of it, which would be leading to discrimination. So if you are avoiding knowing a little bit about the employee, it might mean bias can be reduced or hopefully eliminated.